Thank you so much for joining us today. Today I'm joined by Christopher Engel, Commercial Supply Chain Service Director for World Courier, an Amerisource Bergen company. Today we're going to be talking about how to secure your supply chains of non-COVID related pharmaceutical products. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. My pleasure and thank you for having me, Zach. Yeah, well, let's dive right into it. So what's the impact of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout on non-COVID-19 related pharmaceutical supply chains and air freight? Well, Zach, I mean, given the scale of the challenge, but also the importance for people around the globe, it is a legitimate question. And as the rollout of vaccination programs for COVID-19 gathers pace globally, um, there has been more and more concerns and also question marks within the industry how this might affect pharmaceutical supply chains. For instance, the USA and the United Kingdom uh, have ordered over 1 billion doses of vaccinations between them. And in total, we are already talking about more than 6 billion pre-ordered doses around the globe, which makes the numbers pretty huge. And to better understand how this might actually affect air freight, we just did some recent research for a World Career webinar, which was based on the following key assumptions. I mean, let's assume there's a world population of 7.8 billion people. Not everyone is likely to get vaccinated. So there, there's a vaccine coverage of approximately 75%. Uh, the majority of vaccines need two doses per person. Um, there's an average uh, weight per dose of 8.5 grams plus the packaging, and about 45% uh, of those vaccines will be transported by air with an average air freight capacity of 5.4 tons. So there's no need to recall all the numbers, but based on these figures, we calculated uh, the global rollout of the vaccine is estimated to generate about 60 thousand tons of air freight roughly. And that's basically enough to fill 11,200 Boeing 777 airplanes. So on the face of it, this seems like a massive number and also a boring one for those who have other pharmaceutical products to distribute. However, it isn't a huge concern, especially when we put this number in context of total air freight volumes. And in fact, it only represents about 0.3% of all air trade in the year 2019. And yes, it is a substantial undertaking, but even given the less air trade volumes in the year 2020, it's one that we still have capacity for as an industry. And at World Korea, we are really proud to be able to play our part in supporting the distribution effort. And those insights I mentioned, they enable us to effectively support our pharma clients by making preparations for delivery volumes or cargo availability, for instance. And bottom line here is, while the logistics of the COVID-19 is already a complex topic in itself, which we could probably spend hours on to talk about, there's surely other factors and hurdles which might impact pharma supply chains, but at least the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine will very likely not have a severe or negative impact on other supply chains of essential medication. And the observations from the last month since uh, the rollout started is kind of supporting this assumption as well. Yeah, that's, that's a great perspective for sure. Those numbers can uh, sound intimidating, but I guess when you put it against the, uh, the backdrop of what's going on, uh, that's, that's really good insight. So in your opinion, what are the greatest distribution challenges for pharmaceutical supply chains these days? Yeah, I mean, if we exclude the COVID-19 vaccine logistics now and concentrate on non-COVID related drugs, I mean, first things coming to mind might be the limited supply of air cargo due to commercial flight reduction, uh, their disruption at ports, there are quarantine crews, and also labor shortages due to lockdowns, which are all some kind of contributing factors, I would say. But the ultimate challenge still remains to ensure business continuity and distribution of drugs to patients. So while there are also different uh, and of course region specific challenges, we also have to acknowledge the fact that in the past, pharmaceutical supply chains were very much designed to increase efficiencies and decrease costs. So as a result, those pharma supply chains, they are very lean with little or no redundancy built in. And this can be especially observed in generic drugs like antibiotics, for example. 
And now fueled by globalization, there has been a considerable consolidation in the drug market, leading to fewer potential producers and, and less competition with a concentration of sourcing and manufacturing in a handful of countries. And most active pharmaceutical ingredients, so-called APIs, so that's the key component of any drug, most of them are sourced from China and India, which alone, which alone account for approximately 80% of the APIs used uh, in drugs sold in the United States already. And interestingly, this over-reliance on certain countries was already on the radar before the pandemic, and it was already before COVID-19 a major root cause for drug shortages. So you see the pandemic is actually just a kind of magnifying glass for the widespread nature of challenges and hurdles. And that is why I think it's even more important for pharma companies to have a variety of strong logistic partners. So partners for the everyday challenges, but also specialty providers that have the ability to support the upstream activities of drugs during the whole drug product life cycle, starting from sourcing uh, the raw materials and APIs during the manufacturing process, but also for distributing the finished drugs under, let's say, complex and limiting conditions, not only regional, but actually on a global scale while being agile and dynamic at the same time to adapt and respond to major disruptions. Yeah, I think you could probably apply a lot of those challenges to a lot of other industries as well. So how will the pandemic reshape the future pharmaceutical supply chain? Yeah, and that's a very interesting and tough question, Zach, given the little amount of time we have left here, but we will surely see more local manufacturing in the future again due to reshoring activities. And those activities can be, for instance, already observed in Europe, um, where governments start to give incentives for local manufacturing, again, as a countermeasure uh, to the over-reliance, which I mentioned on certain countries already. But I guess only reshoring and reducing the dependency on import of pharmaceutical raw materials and API, I don't think that this is the answer. So instead, future pharma supply chain should not only focus on efficiency and driving down cost, but actually supply chains should be built on patient centricity. But of course, there's no one size fits all for that. And the pandemic clearly demonstrated how important specialty logistics is to kind of a rem maintain business continuity. And COVID-19 was definitely like a stress test for all the pharmaceutical supply chains and their corresponding contingency plans in place. And it proved that having a plan B is essential, but even more essential is to have a plan C or plan D. So even without having a crystal ball myself, um, we will probably see more diversification on the manufacturing side, but also on the transport and logistics solution side. Yeah, I think it's gonna be an interesting ride for sure to see what comes after all this kind of settles out. Well, thank you so much uh, for all those insights, Chris, and thank you for watching and be sure to check out freightways.com for topics like this and other freight market intelligence.